This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Isai. So today is Asar B'teves, and uh, one of the differences between Asar B'teves and the other Tanesim is we have a unique description of it in the words of the Navi, in the Navi Cheskal, Ezekiel. Huh? It says over there in chapter 24, verse 2, that Ben Adam, son of man, Kisav Lucha Hashem Hayyim, write the name of the day as Esem Hayyim that very day, Samach Melech Bavel El Yushalayim. The king of Bavel surrounded Jerusalem, Be'etzem Hayyim on that very day. So, first we have to know what happened on Asar Batebis. That's the day, it's basically the beginning of the process. That's when Nebuchadnezzar surrounded the walls of Yerushalayim. That's what happened on Asar Batevis. And as we said in the Slichas today, that during this period of time, during these, this three-day period, a number of tragedies happened. So, for example, on the eighth day of Teves, Nehemiah ben Chaklaya passed away, and the Torah was translated into Greek. Mm-hmm. On the ninth day of Teves, Ezra HaSoifer, who was Malachi, passed away. And then finally, on the tenth day of Teves, the walls of Yushalayim were surrounded. We know they were breached in the times of the first Beis HaMikdash when... Uh, seventh so far, the ninth Tammuz? day ninth. of Tammuz. By Bayez Sheni, was the seventeenth day of Tammuz. And then finally, the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed both times on the ninth day of Av. And then Gedalia was assassinated on the third day of Tishrei. That's the cycle, the fourth cycle of Chorben. So we have over here an unbelievable Chassam Seifer in the Drushas, his Drushas for Zion Tavis. We mentioned in the Drusha yesterday that Chassam Seifer gave a hespit for Yosef David. Who remembers? Sinsheim, yeah, that's all right. So <laughs> for, for a fast day, that's good, right? So um, Yosef David Sinsheim. So Chassam Seifer has a few questions on the Pasuk here. First of all, the Chassam Seifer wants to know. If you look in this pasuk, if you look in the pasuk, it says etzem hayoyim azeh two times, right? It says ben adam ksav lecha shem hayoyim as etzem hayoyim azeh, and then again it says be etzem hayoyim azeh. The first time it says Hayoim et Samayim and the second time it doesn't say Hayoim et Samayim So what's up with that? First of all, by no other tightness does it even say et Samayim In this passage it says it twice. The first time it says Hayoim the first time, and it doesn't say it the second time. But really what's the most troubling question is if you think about the difference between all the Tanesim and Asar Bateves, Mamisha Pela Atzuma. How many tragedies happened on Tishabav? The Mishnah says in Tainus, on Avchav Tess, five, right? What were they? First base of Mikdash, second base of Mikdash, what? They put a Tzalem in the Heichal, the what? The Chet HaMaraglim, Tornus Rufus plowed over the base of Mikdash, the, the Shalayim, and they and Beit was destroyed, okay? How about Yudzayin Tamos? Yudzayin Tamos, Nishtabra Haluchais, the Luchais were broken, and they burnt a Tyra, and they breached the walls, and the carbon tumid stopped being brought. Also, five tragedies happened on Yudzayim Batamas. How? What, what, what a coincidence, right? Five tragedies on Shavas Batamas, five tragedies on, on Tishabav. What's the Pshat in that? So the Gemara says, Magalgal and Chayev, Liyam Chayev. Bad things happen on bad days. You know, it becomes like a lightning rod for bad things. So, whenever bad things need to happen, so they sort of, they're attracted to that day, be it Shavas Batamas, or be it Tishabav. Comes Asar Bateves and look what happened. Only one bad thing happened. What's that? The walls were surrounded. Yeah, but like in the general vicinity, other bad things happened. On the on the eighth, Nehemiah died, and the Torah was translated into Greek. On the ninth, Ezra died. So why isn't Asar Bateves a sufficient enough of a lightning rod to attract all the bad things onto that day. Why are they happening like in the general proximity? What well, it's not bad enough the, the like the power of the lightning rod was was not strong enough to to suck everything onto Asar David. It just got into the in the general vicinity. How do we explain that? That's what the Khsam Sefer wants to know. So the Khsam Sefer says a wondrous concept. 
And that is, Asara Bateves is the one calendar date that's not a calendar date. What does that mean? Most calendar dates are dependent on the day of the month. Asara Bateves has nothing to do with the day of the month. It's not like Pesach, which is the 15th day of Nisan, or Sukkot, which is the 15th day of Tishrei. It's, it's a day. Which day is it? It's the 98th day of the year. Now, what's significant about the number 98? So we know in Parshas Kisavai, there are 98 Kolois so of the Teichacha. Right? Rashi says in Parshas Pinchas, Rashi doesn't say in Parshas Kisavai, but Rashi in Parshas Pinchas says, why do we bring 98 Kvasim on Sukkot? 14 times 7. Rashi says to protect us from the 98 curses of the Teichacha. So the number 98 is a really bad number. That's the number of curses. 98 is like a tragic number. The 98th day of the year would then have to be a bad day. <coughs> and Asar Bateves is a bad day. The 98th day of the year is a really bad day. Or sometimes it's 9, sometimes And it's what day is the 98th day of the year? Well, let's think for a moment. The answer is, it depends. It could come out on one of three possible days. How's that? In a Shana Chasera, in a year where Cheshvan and Kislev are Chaser, right? On a day that, um, that Tishrei and that Cheshvan and Kislev are Chaser, then the 98th day of the year are is Asar Batavis. How's that? You have 30 days in Tishrei. 29 and 29, Cheshvan and Kislev. That's what? 58. 58 plus 30 88. is 88. Plus 10 days in Teves gets you to the 98th day of the year. That's in a year like this year. Some years you have Asar Batavis. Some years Cheshvan and Kislev are both Malay. Then Asar Batavis would be on the 8th day of the month. And some years one is Malay and one is Chaser. So then Asar B'teves would be on the ninth day of the month. So in Mela, Asar B'teves is the one day of the year, which is not dependent on the day of the month, but rather on the day of the year. It's day 98. And day 98 is a tragic day. And that's why tragedies always happen on the 98th day of the year. In the year that Nehemiah passed away, the 98th day of the year was the 8th day of Teves. On the day that Ezra passed away, the 98th day of the year was the 9th. So call it Ezra Teves, call it Tisha... You know, Yom Tisha and Why don't we just fast on the day? The major fast on those days. No, the answer is that when we establish calendar, when we establish days, we have to establish by the month. But if you want to know the significance of that calendar date, it's day 98. <coughs> but it's not really the significance of it is not the day of the month it's the day of the year it's day 98 and so therefore fast on a but, so, why we fast on so they picked they have to pick a calendar date they, pick they picked that day they picked that day maybe because that was the day that Yushalayim was surrounded that's the biggest tragedy so they picked that day you can't change the day based on the year fast it's not the, the less, less important is the is what we call it more important than the day we fast. Yeah, well, that's, there is no calendar, there is no such thing in Judaism as a day of the year. So they picked Asar Batavis. That was the day that Yushalayim was surrounded. But the concept behind it is, it's day 98. Therefore, says Chassam Soifer, the Navi is emphasizing the fact that it says, Ksav Lecha, Eshem Hayoim, Es Etzem Hayoim Hazeh. That very day. But then the Navi re- reiterates, it's not the Yoim meaning it's not the calendar date, but it's etzem hayoyim hazeh. It's the actual day. It's the, it's the number of day of the year. That is the significance of asara b'teves. So let, well, maybe we'll add a little bit. What exactly is, is significant about the number 98? And what does it have to do with asara b'teves? Because let's, let's point out one thing. And that is every other tainas we did in Avera. And that's what created the day to be a lightning rod for tragedy. For example, Shivasa Batamos, we did an Avera. What was the Avera of Shivasa Batamos? We served the Egel. So once we served the Egel, Mamela, the Luchos were broken, and Yushalayim, the walls were breached, and the, and, uh, the Torah was burnt. 
because we were chayte. It's not just randomly that it became a bad day. We did Navera, so the day became a lightning rod. Uh, Tishabav, we are the Chet HaMaraglam. Tzayim Gedalia, we assassinated Gedalia. So what did we do on Asar Bateves that made Asar Bateves a Yom Tzara? What, what do we do exactly? All we know is Yushalayim was, was destroyed, uh, Yushalayim was surrounded, and Ezra died, and Nehemia died, and the Torah was translated into Greek. But what happened? That's not available. That translated? We didn't have a choice, you know, when the king says. So what exactly, what was the chait that created Asar Bateves? So I want to, over here, in number three, we have, a, we have an English Maramakaim. The reason why, what? First. First? I think no, on the... On the, tra- on the on the you translate it to Greek, so you could translate to English. The Ten Commandments here, right? <laughs> we had we had Rav Shamsh and Falharsh. but there's a reason why uh, this Marmakim is in English. You say, why didn't I do it in Hebrew? Because the English version of Rav Asher Weiss is different than the Hebrew version, and this does not appear in the Hebrew version. I even had somebody call Rav Asher Weiss and say, D- you know, it's the English and the Hebrew are they're not the same? Is there a reason for that? So, and he responded, yeah, there's a reason for that. It's because they were written at different times. It's not a translation. So this, in fact, does not appear in the Hebrew. Otherwise, there's a whole Torah why exactly this is on here. But he, he has a very uh, excellent Ha'ara. And that is, if you look through Sefer Bereshis, the topic that is discussed at greatest length, more than any other topic, is the sale of Yosef. Avram Avinu, how many parshas does Avram Avinu have? You have Lech Lecha, Bayera, Chayisara. Three. How many Yitzchak? One. Haldos. Yaakov Avinu. Ayitze. Ayishlach. He's in the rest. He's in the rest, but you know he's not the he's, he's not the main character. He's a uh, he's second fiddle. You have the sale of Yosef is a topic in the Torah that covers the most real estate. You have Vayeshev, Miketz, Ayigash, Vayechi. Why is that? He says, of all the episodes of God's Sembrations, Yosef's is surely related at the greatest length and in the most and is the most detailed. The story of his dreams, his conflict, his slavery, imprisonment, rise to power, uniting his family, span the course of four parashios, almost one third of the safer. In contrast to the lives of the others themselves are described in far less detail. You know, with Yosef you even have to know how the caravan what it smelled like. You know what kind of why, why is the sale of Yosef? It seems to be the most important topic in Sefer Bereshis. Okay, so let me just share with you a, uh, a chazal that is quoted by Rabbeinu B'chaye. It's a paladik chazal. I think I once mentioned at one of the Shalom Zachars. And chazal goes like this. We know in this week's parsha, coming parsha, parsha Zayichi. Everybody knows that Parshas Vayigash and Vayichi, it's Sassam Lagamri, there's no space between the end of Vayigash and the beginning of Vayichi. And Chazal say, Yaakov Vinu wanted to be Megala the Kates, Vinista Menu, and it was hidden from him. Okay. So there's a Chazal, Chazal say like this. Why did Yaakov want to be Megala the Kates? Because he looked at the names of the Shvatim, and he looked Ruvain, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Yisach, Azul, Andana, Aftali, God, Asher, Yosef, Ben Yamin. And he saw that in the names of the Shvatim, all the letters of the Aleph Beis appear, except for two, Ches and Tes. There's nobody named Yecheskel, there's nobody named Chaim, there's no Ches there, there's no, there's no, there's no Tes. So Yaakov, oh, there's no Chet? I could be Megala the Ketz. Because they have no Chet, they have no Sin. But then he looked again and said, but there are also another two letters they don't have. They don't have a Kuf and they don't have a Tzadi. They don't have Ketz either. Ah, oh, so I can't be Megala the Ketz. So, the Chassam Soifer, in the, we're going to skip a little, we make it short today. But if you go to number nine, the Chassam Soifer wrote a Sefer called Jerushim Ba'agadois, Chassam Soifer. Now, these were the Chidushim he had when he was young. Now, Chassam Soifer is considered one of the most creative darshan of all time. Chassam Soifer is one of my, you know, certainly one of my favorites, probably top three. And Chassam Sofer was a very unique personality, a very broad personality. He was a Rosh Hashiva, so he has Chidush and Shas. He was a Paisek, he has Shalos Tshuvas, and he was also one of the greatest Baal Darshanim. And the, these are the drushes he wrote when he was young, so they're considered the most creative, you know, when you have the youthful spirit. Anyway, Chassam Sofer wants to know, and this Chazal that Rabbeinu B'chaye wrote, by the way, Chassam Sofer was a tremendous fan of Rabbeinu B'chaye. Every single Friday night, Chassam Sofer learned Rabbeinu B'chaye ala Torah for 40 years. 
Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar was his go-to Friday night sefer. And so I'm several wants to know, what's Pshad in Rabbeinu Bechai? Where first Yaakov saw there's no Ches and Tes, so he wanted to be Megala Lekates, and then he realized they don't have a Kuf and a Tzad either, so he can't be Megala Lekates. I mean, Metchila my Savar, Levesef my Savar. The moment he realized there's no Ches and Tes, he should have realized right away there's no Kuf and Tzadi. I mean, oh, they have no Ches and let me Megala Lekates. Oh, but they don't have a Kuf and Tzadi either. Like, what was the back and forth? Either you're Megala or you're not Megala. Why was there like this time period where he knew there was no Ches and Tes, but he didn't realize there was no Kuf and Sadi, but he didn't get up to those two letters in, in the Alephes yet? So the Chassam Soifer says like this. Chassam Soifer says, we mentioned this past Wednesday night, that Yaakov Avinu never knew the brother sold him. Yaakov didn't know about it. Nobody told him there was a Cherem or Yosef. For whatever reason, Yaakov never knew that the brother sold him. Until his deathbed, until this week's parasha, when Yaakov Avinu was lying on his deathbed, and the brothers said, "Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekein Hashem Echad, we're all one, we're all ba'achdos." So Yaakov Avinu figures they're all, you know, they all love each other. But when he gets up to the bracha for Yosef, what bracha does he give to Yosef? Vayistumuhu varoivu. They made his life bitter. They quarreled with him. What does that mean? That, that means Beruach HaKodesh, it was Neskala to Yaakov Avinu that the brothers sold Yosef for the first time. So Yaakov Avinu, when they're standing around that bed, and they're saying Shema, and they're saying there's one God and we're all one, Yaakov Avinu figured, even though there's no Kuf and Sadi in their names, but they're standing in one Kivutza, the Kibbutz Echad. In fact, the Beis Yosef writes that when Yosef HaTzadik reunited with his brothers in Mitzrayim, they were masaking the bracha, Mekabetz Nidche Amo Yisrael. Beis Yosef says that all the brachas of Shemana Esrei were instituted at, mm-hmm. based on various episodes that happened in Sefer Bereshis. So Yagavinu figured they're one kvutza, and the word kvutza has... Kuf and Sadi. Mamela Yaakovinu says, He kavtsu v'shimu b'nei Yaakov. How does the Berchaz Yaakov begin? He kavtsu v'shimu, gather together. Once you're gathered together, I could be Megala the Kates to you because the kibbutz has the letters Kuf and Sadi. You don't have a Ches and Tes and your Kavutza Achas has the Kuf and the Tzadi. But then when Yaakovinu realized <laughs> that this kibbutz was a uh, superficial one, was not a genuine one, that in fact there was Sinas Chinam among the brothers... He couldn't tell them when the kates was because they don't have the kuf and the tzadi anymore. The kuf and the tzadi was only through their kibbutz, which Yagavino now realizes was not a genuine kibbutz. So let's go back to the number 98. What is the significance of the number 98? There's a pasuk in Yeshaya, Ki koy omar Hashem, so says Rebbe Hashem, Chinam nimkartem, with money you will be bought, v'loi bekesev tiga elo, with money you will be sold, and not with silver will you be redeemed. What does that mean? You were sold for nothing, chinam nimkartem, you were sold for nothing, and you will not be redeemed with silver. Says the Heilige Chida. This is a reference to Bayasheni. Bayasheni was destroyed because of sinas chinam. Chinam nimkartem. You were sold because of Sinas Chinam. Memela, if you want to rebuild the base of Mikdash, Loi be Kesef Niga Elu. What Oyev Kesef Lo Yizba Kesef means, as I'll say, Ein Kesef Ela Mitzvahis. Oyev Mitzvahis Lo Yizba Mitzvahis. Since the base of Mikdash was destroyed because of Sinas Chinam, Memela, it will not be rebuilt with Kesef, with money, with, with, with Mitzvahis, because that's not addressing the problem. It will only be rebuilt the Avas Chinam. Says the Chida. The Gematria of Chinam is? Ninety-eight. Says the Chida, why are there ninety-eight curses in the Teichacha? Because the Teichacha in Parashas Kisava is the Teichacha of Bayasheni. The Chukaisa is Bayas Rishain. The second base Amigdash was destroyed because of Sinas Chinam. Chinam is ninety-eight. Chinam Nimkartem, you were destroyed because of Sinas Chinam. Follow the Kesef Tigaelu, you will not be redeemed with mere mitzvahs. You need Avas Chinam. Marv Rabbi what was the greatest act of Sinas Chinam in history? 
חיבס יוסף. חיבס יוסף. סינר טו הברודר. I found Mamish Oyam Venoira in a sefer of Rav Baruch Simon, who is a Rashiva in Rabbeinu Yitzchak Elchanan, who is a friend of mine, and he um, quotes the Rosh Kailal of um, Ger, I think Rav Shalom of Fisher. He says a Chiddush Atzim in a sefer Beis Yishai. <coughs> and we know every single Tainus, there was always a Chet that happened on that Tainus. So you have... Uh, um, Shabbos of Atamos, the chait of um, the Egal, and Tishabav, the chait of the Maraglim, and some Gedalia, Sashin Gedalia. What chait happened on Asara Bateves? So he says, Lule de Mistafina, even though I don't have a clear raya to this, he would suggest that Mechiras Yosef took place on Asara Bateves. And what's the, what's the remez? His remez is that the mazal of Chodesh Teves is mazal Gedi, and we know that uh, when they sold Yosef, they yishchatu seirizim, they shechted a Gedi. So I once said this over, somebody suggested, that's why in the Slichas this morning, what do we say? Taroif Taraf. Yeah, do you notice that? Taroif Taraf. Where does that Lashon come from? Chiras Yosef. Now, Rabbi Yosei, if if this is true, if Mechiras Yosef happened on Asar Bateves, then it would come out, Kaftar Vafarach, why Asar Bateves is in fact the 98th day of the year. It's the day of Chinam, it's the day of Sinas Chinam. The 98th day of the year, the day Yushalayim was surrounded, and the entire process of Chorban began. The entire process of Chorban began on the 98th day of the year, 98 corresponding to the 98th close of the Toichacha. And if today is the day of Mechiras Yosef, then that's why we know that this is the day that Sinas Chinam is the lightning rod for many, many other tsaris. This is the day of Mechiras Yosef. Interesting, Chida points out that all the fast days eventually will be Nishapech Latoiva. So the Pasuk says, Nagila Venismachabach, Nagila is also Gematria 98. So Rav Oshawai says like this. In terms of why, why Mechiras Yosef is the most um, spoken about at greatest length, why Mechiras Yosef is a topic of Chumash that occupies the most real estate, he says like this. Let's read it. He says, Surely this is because Yosef's story has the greatest relevance to our own lives. We know that the Torah is not a history book. The Torah only gives us information that is necessary to know. I remember there, there's, um, there's a Sefer, Mavai Sha'arim, the Rashiva of Gateshead. So he speaks about, you know, somebody once asked, is there life on Mars? <laughs> you know, is there life on Mars? What does the Torah say about life on Mars? So he says, one thing I know for sure, whether there is or whether there's not, it doesn't make a nafkamina to anybody's life. Why? Because if it made a nafkamina to anybody's life, it would be in the Torah. The Torah is a book of information that you need to know how to live your life. Whatever is in the Torah is information you need to know how to live your life. And whatever is not in the Torah means you don't need to know it to be able to live your life. So it says Rav wise, the fact that the topic of Bereshus that occupies the most real estate is the Mechir of Yosef is coming to teach you that this is obviously the story that is most relevant to everybody's life, the concept of Sinas Chinam. He says, it was the senseless hatred between the brothers that ultimately led to their descent into Egypt, where their children were enslaved and tortured for hundreds of years. Many generations later, punishment was again exacted when Rekiva and nine fellow Tanam were executed by the Romans to atone for the sin of ten brothers who sold Yosef into slavery. Although we cannot claim to understand the depth of Hashem's judgment or His ultimate plan for His nation, it is quite clear that the direct cause of our suffering both now and throughout our history is the unjustifiable strife and bickering among us. We conclude Sefer Bracious and the narrative of the lives of the others with this one crucial message, which calls out to each and every one of us. The senseless bickering among us is the cause of our troubles. Only by bridging the gaps between our hearts can we hope to be redeemed. May it be soon and in our days. That is today, day 98 on the calendar. Sometimes it's the 8th, sometimes it's the 9th, sometimes it's the 10th. It's suggested that was the day of Mechir Yosef, and that is why it's the day of Sinas Chinam. We should all be Zoycha. Tzayim HaRavi, Tzayim HaChamishi, Tzayim HaShvi, Tzayim HaSiri, Yiyeh Levei Sehuda, V'sasayim, V'lesimcha, V'lemayadim, Taivim.
Ches Tes. Oh, very good. Ches Yud Tes. Shubim. Neshapeche Letoiva. Shkaya. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.